Hello everyone. In this video I am going to tell you that how to find the particle size distribution using hydrometer analysis test. So I have prepared the excel sheet and I will show you with example that how we calculate the percentage finer. I have prepared the excel sheet in which I will show you the graph between the percentage finer and the percent passing through each sieve. So by using a dispersing agent we will calculate the percent finer and after that without dispersing agent we will again calculate the percent finer so uh, it's mean that uh, there are two uh, hydrometer analysis tests conducted one is for the dispersing agent and the other one is for without dispersing agent so you have to mention the test date on which you have conducted the hydrometer analysis so hydrometer type used here is 152h and the dispersing agent is sodium oxalate. A dispersing agent we can also use the sodium hexametophosphate but in this case we use sodium oxalate. Uh, the specific gravity of the soil is 2.70 and the weight of the sample is 50 gram and the weight of the sodium oxalate is 5 gram. The zero correction for the hydrometer is uh, 5. It may be very depend on your situation that how much correction is needed for the hydrometer and this is the meniscus correction its value is 1 and then it also very depend on the type of hydrometer. So after that we have the correction factor alpha which is 0 0.99 then the finer percentage finer then number 200 sieve for hydrometer analysis we have to find first the percentage finer then number 200 sieve that is 97.81 so for this we will just take the sample weight of sample is equal to 100 gram uh, using different sieve number from number 4 to 200 that is sieve number 4 sieve number 10 sieve number 40, sieve number 100 and sieve number 200. The weight retained in gram on each sieve is given in the second column that is 0 for sieve number 4 and the weight retained on sieve number 10 is again 0, the weight retained on 40 is 0 0.07 and for 100 and 200 is 0 0.92 and 1.2. So it means that out of 100 these values is actually the percentage retained and the rest of the sample passed through sieve number 200. So after that we will find the cumulative weight retained it is actually the weight retained on the sieves smaller than the current one like if we calculate for sieve number 4 it is the cumulative weight retained here 0 so it will be 0. The cumulative weight retained on sieve number 10 is again 0 because 0 plus 0 is equal to 0 and then for sieve number 40 it will be 0 plus 0 plus 0 0.07 and it will be 0 0.07. Similarly for sieve number 100 the cumulative weight retained will be equal to 0 plus 0 plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.92 which will be equal to 0 0.99 and for 200 again adding 1.2 with this value or simply add all this value to get 2.19. The cumulative weight retained on each sieve has been found and now we have to find the percentage retained on each sieve. It is actually the percentage. For uh, percentage we just use this value divided by the sum of the sample like we have 100 gram sample dividing this value divided by 100 multiplying with 100 we will get 0. So look here it is actually 0 divided by L3 is the weight of sample in gram and multiplying it with 100 we get 0. It is the cumulative percentage retained for this we do the same like uh, dividing this value the cumulative weight retained on sieve number 10 divided by total sample multiply 100 again 0 cumulative weight retained divided by the sample weight multiplying it with 100 we get 0.07 percentage retained. This is actually the formula this cumulative weight retained divided by weight of sample multiplying 100 so we get we get 0.07 and for this again this value divided by this value multiply by 100 we get 0 0.99 for 2.219 uh, divided by 100 multiplying 100 we get 2.19 so it is actually the percentage retained on different sieves. Once we find the percentage retained then we will find the percent passing by calculating the percent passing we will just subtract the percentage retained on each sieve from 100. 100 minus 0 is equal to 100 again 100 minus 0 is equal to 100 100 minus 0 0.07 um, is equal to 99.93 and then 100 minus 0.99 is equal to 99.01 and then uh, 100 minus 2.19 is equal to 97.81 so we need this value so once we calculate the percent finer than 200 we will write this value here in this cell so once we find this now it's turn now it's time to find the uh, percent passing using hydrometer analysis so we will uh, take the hydrometer reading on different uh, time like 
like for uh, like at 0 minute we will take the hydrometer reading that is uh, 53 and then uh, at 1 minute then uh, on 2, 3, 4, 8, 15, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120, 180 and 240 we will take these readings at uh, this time. Uh, the temperature of the water used in the sedimentation jar uh, have the temperature of 22 degree. So, we will use throughout 22 degree in this column. Now, the temperature correction factor C T will be calculated using the table. So, we have 22 degree centigrade temperature then the value should be plus 0 0.4 for the temperature correction. Again the temperature is throughout 22. So, we will use here 0 0.04 for all readings 0 0.04 up to this point. Now, this is actually the temperature correction the R C formula is actually the R C is equal to R A actual hydrometer reading minus 0 correction plus C T value. So, here actual reading is this and this is the uh, 0 correction value 5 look here B 14 is actually ac actual hydrometer reading minus D 14 is the C T temperature and then G 4 is actually the 0 correction by clicking enter we get corrected hydrometer reading similarly the same formula is used to find out the corrected hydrometer reading at a different time after this once we find the corrected hydrometer reading then we will find the hydrometer correction only for meniscus R m. For R m the formula here is R is equal to R a plus meniscus correct corrected hydrometer reading for meniscus only is actually equal to R a plus meniscus correction. Actual hydrometer reading is here in this column 53, 51, 47 and the meniscus correction is 1 adding simple 1 to this value we get 54 and then adding 1 to 51 we get 52. So, we get this column the hydrometer correction only for meniscus R m. After that we have to find the effective depth length. The effective depth length have a formula we will use that formula to find out the effective depth. So, I will show you here the effective depth formula. So, uh, we will use uh, the formula to find out the effective depth that is step number 6 determine effective depth from the table 6-5 by using R. If you have the actual hydrometer reading then you can calculate effective depth and uh, these effective depth can also be calculated from a formula. Uh, here the formula is not uh, given but uh, the formula uh, written in Excel is this one minus 0 0.1639 multiplied by F4. F4 is the hydrometer correction only for meniscus, uh, meniscus R m. Uh, so, look here uh, when we are going to calculate the effective depth L then we will use the hydrometer correction uh, only for meniscus value to find out the effective uh, depth. The formula here is minus uh, effective depth is equal to minus 0 0.1639 multiplied by F14 uh, minus 6.2. 97. So, this is actually constant in the formula this is the constant and this value will vary that is F 14 the hydrometer reading corrected for meniscus. So, using this we get uh, the effective uh, depth here in this column we calculate the effective depth at different time using the corrected uh, hydrometer reading for meniscus we calculate the effective depth. Now, we will calculate the length divided by time. So, length is actually in centimeter coming from this formula and then dividing it by time in minutes we will get L by T. This is actually the L by T values like uh, here the time is 0 this value will 0 and here at time 1 minute we will divide 7.717 divided by 1 we get 7.717 for 2 similarly dividing 8.43 by time 2 minutes we get 4.21 the other values can be calculated similarly. Now, we will use the k value. So, k value actually depend upon the temperature as well as the specific gravity. So, using the table number 6-4 we have temperature of 22 degree centigrade and the unit weight of soil the specific gravity of soil is actually 2.70 for 22 and then for 2.71 we have 0 0.0131 so, writing the k value here 0 0.0132 this value here and uh, then finding the percent finer. For percent finer we will use the, uh, the corrected hydrometer reading RC. When we were going to find out the effective depth we use the 
corrected hydrometer reading for meniscus and when we are going to find the percentage finer then we will use the corrected hydrometer reading for temperature that is RC using this value multiplying it with the G6 actually the correction factor alpha alpha multiplied by the corrected reading for temperature dividing by the sample size that is 50 gram multiplying it with 100 we calculate the percent finer at time t is equal to 1 minute similarly the percent finer calculated for 2 minute is actually again using the same alpha and multiplying it with the corrected hydrometer reading for temperature and then dividing it with the uh, weight of sample that is 50 gram and multiplying it with 100 we get the percent finer at time is equal to 2 minute that is 83.95 percent finer the rest of the values are calculated in the same manner the percent finer formula is actually here that is in step number 4 the percent finer is equal to rc multiplied by a divided by ws here we here ws is the weight of sample rc is the corrected hydrometer reading for temperature and a is the correction factor correction factor alpha that is not a alpha it's alpha so alpha is equal to 0 0.99 once we find the percentage finer then we will adjust this percentage finer like uh, multiplying it with the percent finer then cu number 200 we will get 89.86 look at the formula above the percent finer is 91.87 at time t is equal to 1 minute so multiplying it with the percent finer then number 200 cu that is 97.81 and dividing it by 100 we get the adjusted uh, percentage finer similarly for time t is equal to 2 minute again using this value the percent finer multiplying it with the percent finer then cu number 200 and the and then dividing it by uh, 100 we get 82.11 so the adjusted percentage finer can be calculated in this way and at last we have to find out the particle diameter in mm so for finding the diameter look at the formula here d is equal to k multiplied by square root of l by t so we already calculated l by t value taking the square root of l by t and multiplying it with k value which is constant for the given specific gravity and given specific gravity and temperature we will find out the particle size this is l by t value taking the square root of this value and then multiplying it with k we calculate the particle diameter pressing enter we can calculate the particle diameter for the rest of the time uh, as given in this column up to time 240 minutes once we once we find the particle size here in this column for hydrometer and then we will also use the uh, particle size in that is in CU analysis from CU number 4 to CU number 200 so taking these values and then these values and writing the percent finer in front of them this is actually the particle diameter for CU analysis from CU number 4 the size of CU number 4 is 4.75 the size of CU number 10 is to the size of CU number 40 is 0 0.425 and the size of CU number 100 is 0 0.149 and the size of CU number 200 is 0 0.075 uh, up, up to this point we will use the CU analysis value and after that we will use the hydrometer analysis value that is the particle size uh, taken in this uh, taken from this column that is 0 0.036, 0 0.0269, 0 0.0228 and the percent finer is 89.86, 82.11, 74.0 37 72.43 uh, so this column values is actually the adjusted percent finer look at this 89.86 82.1 and up to 0 0.003 0 0.003 and 2.71 the percent finer 2.71 finer using this uh, column we draw the graph so from graph we can calculate that how much percentage of gravel sand silt clay and collides are present gravel is actually zero because the size of gravel start from 76.2 mm to 4.75 mm so here we start from 4.75 mm if all the sample is passing through sieve number four it means that the gravel is zero after this starting from 4.75 mm to 2 mm is actually the sand and the sand type is coarse so from 4.75 so the percent passing on sieve number uh, four is 100 and also the percent passing on the sieve number 10 is 100 so 100 minus 100 is equal to 0 so the coarse sand will be 0 in this range from 4.75 to 2 mm 
and then from 2 mm to 0 0.425 mm from 2 mm to 0 0.425 mm the difference is actually 100 minus per, uh, 100 minus 99.93 actually the range of the particle size between 100 and 99.93 is actually 0 0.0 0 0.07 percent and then from 0 0.425 that is CU number 40 to CU number 200 having size of 0 point opening size of 0 0.075 mm the coarse sand that is uh, uh, the point type sand is actually 2.12 here if we see that this is CO number 40 and this is CO number 200 so from 40 to 200 the difference is 2.51 so the difference is 2.12 fine sand and then uh, to find out uh, the silt we use the clay value that is uh, 29.30 now to calculate the silt value we will use the clay percentage and the clay percentage can be calculated from the graph like for the like for the particle size of 0 0.055 mm we will go here 0 0.001 0 0.002 0 0.003 0 0.004 and this is 0 0.005 so moving upward and then at this point the percent finer the percentage of the uh, clay is actually 29.30 so once we find the percentage of clay we can calculate the silt like uh, the silt range is from 0 0.075 mm to 0 0.005 mm subtracting 29.30 from 97.81 we calculate the silt and then we get 68.51 the collide particles are too small that is uh, smaller than this point so it is actually the zero so this is actually the hydrometer analysis uh, test to find out the particle size distribution while using the dispersing agent that is sodium oxalate. We can also find the particle size distribution uh, without using dispersing agent. So without dispersing agent is actually this one. The all the process is same similar for this, and uh, just the hydrometer reading will get different if we do not use the dispersing agent. The hydrometer reading value will get changed and rest of the thing will remain the same the graph will also change if the hydrometer reading value changes this is actually the graph when we do not use the dispersing agent and here is the particle the size distribution and it is the percentage of different particles types and then it is the comparison of both two this is the using while using the dispersing agent and this is why without dispersing agent in, com in comparison uh, using the dispersing agent and without dispersing agent we calculate the particle diameter and the percentage finer for both of them. So once we find out uh, the comparison of these two we can find out the dis percentage dispersion uh, which is equal to 0 0.005 mm percent finer without dispersant and then 0 0.005 mm uh, percent finer with dispersant multiplying it with 100. So the percent finer 0 0.005 mm percent finer without dispersant is actually uh, 7.98 and then 0 0.005 mm percent finer with this percent is here 29.30 that is 0 0.005 mm percent finer is actually 29.30 so dividing 7.98 this value divided by 29.3 we get multiplying it with 100 we get 27.24 percent less than 30 so in the sample is non dispersive if this value is greater than 30 then it will be then it will uh, disperse you type of soil the step used to find out the hydrometer analysis is given here in this calculations and this is actually the formulas used in the excel sheet and the tables used to find out different values are here that is table 6.4 6.5 6.2 6.1 6.3 so this is the hydrometer analysis test to find out the particle size distribution and uh, this excel sheet has been prepared if anybody want this excel sheet then I will put its link in the description. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope that uh, you will now be able to perform the hydrometer analysis test. If there is any problem then tell me in the comment section I will reply.